Hi everyone, my name is Ishelle Prisma. I'm a singer-songwriter and a producer, and I was invited here today by Dig Project to talk about the Shruti Box and share some tips and tricks on how to work with this instrument. Some things that I'll talk about today are just the basic uh, anatomy of the instrument and how to set the scales and the tones. I'll talk about how to play the instrument and some tips for getting it to sound really great. And also some different techniques and ways to sing with it and how to kind of work with that. For those of you that aren't familiar, the Shruti Box is a drone instrument and it has its origins in China, um, but we probably more commonly know its origins from India where it's used for traditional chanting and for devotional songs. Uh, similar to a harmonium, but it's, a, it's its own thing. So just briefly to address um, the way to hold your instrument. Um, so I have this one seated on the floor in front of me. This is the largest of the Shruti boxes. So it's great because it stabilizes right here. So you can just let the floor support the instrument. And then it's basically a one-handed thing. Or if you like, you can pump with both hands. Really, you only need one hand. This leaves this hand free for dancing or for playing a shaker or a drum. Um, with the other size instruments, I'll just demonstrate really quickly. There's a couple of different ways to hold that. So this is a smaller shruti box. This one works also by holding it on the ground. But this one also, you can bring up to your knee. And what I find the benefit of bringing up to the knee is that it gives me more centeredness and control, especially if I'm playing another instrument. So you can experiment with how you like it. But the great thing about the small ones is that it has that option. You can do it with the big ones too. It's just a little more challenging. So with this, I'm just balancing it on my knee. And same kind of thing. I can use it one-handed or two-handed. So pretty straightforward. You want to start out by just looking at the face of the instrument here. We're seeing that the keys are just like how they would appear on a piano. So it has all the notes in one octave, um, how they would appear on a piano. So to go through it, this first note here starts with the C, just like how it would start on a piano. And then all of these here would be the white notes, how you would see them. And all of these here would be the black notes. So walking up the scale, this would be C, this would be D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C on the next octave. So these notes here would be the sharps or the flats of these ones. So this would be C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Or you could go back and do B flat, A flat, etc., all the way back down. So when working with the Shruti box, usually you pick two notes, either in a third or in a fifth. And so to give an example of what a third might sound like. Or if you change it to a fifth. And sometimes you can go even a step above. Or a step below. And you can hear how that changes the tonality. So those are some ways to space out the notes. If you're familiar with music theory and you're familiar with the notes on a piano, this will come quite naturally and you'll be able to start forming chords and work with it in that way. If you're not familiar with music theory or piano, don't worry because it's pretty easy to navigate just on its own. 
you basically would pick whatever note you want to start with, which usually would be the key of the song you're singing in or the key that you want to sing in. So for example, a major third, you would count four half steps from the starting note. So say I started on F, I would count one, two, three, four, and then that would be my major third. For a major fifth, you would count seven half steps from the starting note. So again, if I'm starting in F, I'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that seventh note. So that's a really easy way to start building your chords or your pairs on the drone. If you're really familiar with playing the piano and music theory, then this will come quite naturally. And even if you're not, then all you have to do is just follow that rule to just count. And that will give you an idea of wherever you start, just count those spaces. I would say that more commonly, I prefer to use a major fifth as opposed to a major third. Um, because I feel like it gives a richness to the tone. But again, this is something that you can play with and experiment with. So now that we kind of understand how to navigate the keys on the Shruti box, let's just start with the basic way to get the drone going and how to play it. So for this, I'm going to put it in C sharp. So you can see that when I started it, there's a couple ways to start it. The first thing that you intuitively can do is just start pumping. Just push the back. And automatically that opens the front billow and allows the air to start moving through. One trick that I really like for starting to play the Shruti box, especially if you're playing on a smaller box, is to instead of start pumping up here, to bring the bottom bellow out all the way and then just slowly release it. I'm not doing anything yet. I'm allowing the air to move through. And then once I see that it's getting close and I hear that volume going down, then I start pumping it. This allows the Shruti box to do most of the work. You can look at this instrument similar to the lungs that once the lungs are filled we can exhale quite a long time before we need to bring another bout of air in so this is the same once the lungs or the bellows of the instrument are filled then we can let it sustain quite a long time before we pull this top part in which is like the inhale so now we have just a simple drone going I want to talk a little bit about volume at this point. There's a lot of different levels of volume that this drone can actually give us. The main thing that controls the volume is the speed that we're pumping and also the intensity that we're pumping. It's pretty intuitive, but sometimes the mistake that people make is thinking that they have to work really hard to keep this thing going. You see that once I start doing that, the volume's increasing quite a bit. So I'm just gonna demonstrate kind of the volume high and then the volume low, just to show. It seems like that's pretty much the loudest it can get right here. about mid-range and now you can even bring it down lower so it's a pretty dynamic instrument and depending on how you're using it if you're singing if you're playing it as an accompaniment with other instruments then 
you can vary the volume accordingly. I look at this part on the side here and how far away it is from this box as kind of my volume meter. So the further away it is from the box, the louder my volume will be. The closer it's getting to the box, that's how I know the volume is starting to turn down. So the main thing, again, that's distinguishing how far away this is from the box is how big of an inhale the shruti box is making, which is controlled by this hand up here. And you notice when I'm playing low, I'm barely moving this in and out. It's just pumping slightly. When I want to play it loud, I bring it closer to this box and do more of a full range in and a full range out. And that's going to bring the volume up. So that's a great way to kind of start to work with dynamics with this instrument. So just briefly to talk about how to play this instrument in a rhythmic way, basically this hand is controlling the rhythm. So if you want just a normal drone without too much rhythm, then let the instrument do most of the pumping and just bring it in as you need to refill and take that inhale. So if you're playing and you're singing a rhythmic song or there's a drum accompanying you, you can bring some rhythm into the instrument. Uh, one of the ways to do that is to make the down beat, so say the one um, in the count, be where you pump the instrument. So most simple is the one, two, three, four. So if I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then I'm pumping on the one. So it would look like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this is gonna bring a little bit more dynamic if I'm singing a song, for instance. So another thing you could do with it is speed up the rhythm so it's almost like it's pumping all of the counts. So for that you could be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Notice that I'm very subtly pushing it in and out. Otherwise, it's going to get really hard to keep that rhythm, and it's going to sound really loud. So <laughs> keeping it really subtle. But you can hear the instrument is creating a rhythm there. So this can be a rhythmic instrument. So just play around. There's lots of different things that can be done with it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it can go on from there. So lots of things to explore there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is how to sing with this instrument. There's obviously a lot of different directions we can take. One thing that I love about the Shruti box is that it helps to train the voice to hold certain tones and certain pitches. So this is a wonderful tool if you are learning how to train your ear and your voice to stay on pitch and to open up in range because you can tone really easily with this instrument, which I would say is the most common and traditional way to work with it. So I'm going to demonstrate what that can look like. So I'm playing with all the different notes that are existent within this particular scale. And this is a fun exercise for the voice to just kind of soar and see what wants to come through. This is also a wonderful instrument for traditional chants. I'm going to give a demonstration of a really common one, um, which is a chant to Krishna. Hare Krishna chant. And you can see what it sounds with a little bit of ryth rhythm in, in the chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
about using this instrument personally is that it can be used with a lot of different types of music. So even though traditionally we hear it a lot with Hindu chants or mantras or toning, um, it can also be used for whatever songs and whatever style songs you like to sing. Um, and it can add a, a new element to the songs you bring in. So I'm going to sing a different type of song just so you can kind of hear a different way to utilize it. much for watching this video and all of these Shruti boxes are available on the Dig Project website so you can check them all out there. If you have any questions about anything you can leave a comment on this video and if you want to see more videos like this you can just hit subscribe and follow us. Thank you. We are healing, healing.